Yeah, what's up? So, uh... On Friday, I made $24, I think, or 20 no, $26. I don't really remember what I did. Should have made the recap this weekend. I did. So, look how crazy this looks. Do I trade anything else? Not really, no. Um, my girlfriend's taking down our Christmas tree right now. In... May, so if, if you hear some crazy shit, that's her. But I mean, ever since I started changing my focus from going long and short to only going short, it's been way fucking easier to make money. It's just so much fucking easier. I mean, the only day in the last two weeks that's been really tricky was this day because we had that big wedge in the morning and it broke out all day. I should have just went long. I wanted to, but it's just like, I don't want to fucking go long. I don't want to go long. Why the fuck are you going long in a bear market? You're basically just guaranteeing that you are on the side of maybe the 10%, right? If there's, if the fucking whole market right now, if 90% of everyone wants to sell shit and you want to go long, you are guaranteeing that that shit is going to be extremely fucking hard. Because you're just not following all the volume in the market. If the volume is selling, join them. Just join them. It's going to be still hard. It's not like you can just sell and make money, no problem. But it's going to be a lot fucking easier than going long. So I didn't go long at all Friday. And I just basically shorted these tops. Which I really... The thing that sucks is... I really want to start shorting in these uh, supply zones. And just getting like 50 fucking shares. Holding that shit... All day. All fucking day. Because look at what the fuck happened. This thing went... So this su these supply and demand zones, I talked about them all the time in my recaps now. So back here, these are all... Nah, I gotta get rid of my trades. All right. This is basically a range, okay? And the, the way that the banks define range is through supply and demand. And... You can tell right here this is a fat fucking range, right? Pulls up to the supply, gets dumped because it's a supply. Pulls into the demand, double test, gets pumped up. It's in the supply again in the morning, dumped. In the demand, pulls up, tests it again, pulls up, gets dumped supply. Pulls up again, dumped supply. Pulls up again, dumped supply, breaks through the demand zone, creates a new one. And now we're in the next one, right? Here's the newly formed range. So this is where the new supply zone was first created, right? Big dump. Pulls down into a demand zone. Triple tests. Massive spike here. Okay, but then what happens? Same fucking day in the after hours. Massive dump. What happens the next day? Big spike, massive dump. This is the day where I lost $50, I made 26 here, and then yesterday I made 43. But the thing that sucks is why did I not on Friday see this and be like, holy shit, here's, a, here's the supply zone yet again for the 50th fucking time. Here's the first time you could have shorted it and made 10 fucking dollars a share. Here's the second time you could have shorted it and made 10 fucking dollars a share. Um, if you go back a little more, here is... Another time you could have shorted it, made ten fucking dollars a share. Another time, ten fucking dollars. Another time, ten motherfucking dollars. And another time, about thirty fucking dollars a share. So, you know, um, why do I not find these zones, short into them with small size, and just go fuck myself? Why don't I do that? That's what I should be fucking doing. Uh, but I don't because that's so foreign to me to hold something for legitimately eight hours. I've never done that in my life. I hold things for maybe like max two hours. That's probably like my max hold. But the more that I get, the more I evolve as a trader, I want to learn how to hold things more because that just makes my risk reward better. If I'm trading large caps, you got to hold them for a long time because that's just how it fucking works. There's too much volume and there's too big of a float. So if the float's massive and, you know, it takes... 30, 40, 50, 100 million shares to do what you think will happen, then you're going to have to hold that shit for a long fucking time. 
So what I should have done Friday is shorted right here and just held that shit the whole day. Waited for it to get into the demand zone and just sold it right before close. I mean, you would have made it's $16 a share a move for that move. I mean, if I had fucking 20 shares, holy shit. So, yeah. But, okay, so Friday, big wedge, breaks out, gets into the supply zone, dumps. I short it here. I make 26 bucks, but should have been like $150 green day because I didn't hold it because it was in that supply zone and I didn't fucking hold it. Yesterday, it's sitting right at the bottom in the demand zone, but I'm still shorting it all day yesterday. And I am sized up a little bit, so I was using 10 shares. And I basically was just shorting all these tops. You know, look at these tops. Like, look how hard this thing... It, it does not break out. It doesn't fucking break out. Me, I mean, granted, the SPY is breaking down at the same time as this yesterday. It was at low of day. So, you know, say what you will. But at the same time, if this is breaking out... And look at these little weak breakouts. Look at this. 90 cent a share breakout. That's fucking nothing. Look at this one. 50 cent breakout. Look at this one. 30 cent breakout. Whenever the breakouts get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, that means it's fucking weak, okay? And look at these topping tails. Just You enter right here at a topping tail on the five minute, hold for fucking five minutes. Five dollars a share you make to the downside. Massive green spike. <laughs> Short it again at the top of the breakout. For fucking 90, a 90 cent breakout and you short that shit four dollars a share okay it's just easier to go short right now and the whole day i wanted to go long because i'm just thinking like holy shit we're sitting in this demand zone this is probably going to spike up to 200 again and everything in my body was like go long just do it you know just fucking try it whatever and I was like, nah, I can't. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to fucking break my rules. I'm not going to sit here and try and go long in a bear market. It's just not going to be what I'm going to do. Because fuck that, period. And um, yeah, so I shorted it there, shorted it, shorted it here, shorted it right here with 20 shares. And I made like a $22 profit on like that one trade. So I was like, fuck this. That was a pretty good trade. I'm done. Because this shit, the whole day basically I was saying... I don't want to be holding for long. I want to go for quick scalps. Why? Because if when you're in the middle of the supply and demand zone, shit's going to be very, very sketchy. It can go up and it'll flush on you and it'll come down and it'll spike. It doesn't fucking matter. So when you're sitting in the middle of a range, any direction's possible. So what I, what I should have done is just went long pre-market and just fucking held those shares all day. Why? Because we're in a demand zone in the pre-market. We got out of it in the open, and then we look at this bounce here. I mean, if this isn't a demand zone, I don't know what the fuck is. Demand zones are identified by basically this exact price action. You get a fucking test of the mid-range in the day, pulls back hard after like attempting to maybe try to go to the supply zone, which is up top, and it breaks down and it bounces perfectly off of the demand zone. I mean, this is fucking what? Like 30 cent, 50 cents away from the demand zone. And then right when it goes there, boom. Look at that. $10 a share to the upside. $10 fucking dollars a share to the upside. And it only took an hour and a half. An hour and a half. That's fucking insane. That's fucking crazy. So... Yeah, I didn't trade this long because fuck going long, but this is what I'm excited for. Today, right, we're going to probably get a push up into this supply zone. And Today, we're going to get that push. It's going to be near $200. Maybe it'll break out to 201 And then I am going to short the fuck out of this ticker, and I'm going to hold it all fucking day. And that's what I'm going to do. The only scenario where I don't do that is if this breaks up above the range, which is totally possible. Because look at this prior. Let's say you let's say you like going long, which would mean you're an idiot. But let's say you like going long in a bear market. Where would you go long in this range? Well, you'd go long on the on the uh, demand zone drops, right? You go long here, go long here, go long here, go long here. Okay, but what happens on this day? 
You go long, and then shit, you just lost $13 a share to the downside. And look at how this thing tested this shit. Look at how it tested its supply zone on the very last day. Spike up, $7 a share, boom, shit on. It got completely destroyed right back to the lows. So today I want this, right? If we can get this, that'd be fucking amazing. Pop up to the supply zone, massive flush through. I'll hold that shit the whole way down to here. I don't give a fuck. At least my partial, I'll hold it. But um, that's the plan. If it doesn't do that, I'm going to scalp short. If it does do that, I'm going to fucking short it at 200 and I'm going to try to hold it. I guess my bailout would be if it goes to 203, I would say that's probably where I'm like, ah, fuck. This might not work. Um, the other thing I want to keep an eye on is the spy because. The SPY has this huge trend right now on the four hour. So you can see there's like levels to the trend, right? This is the weak one. This is the stronger one. And then uh, you'll see yesterday, what is this last Wednesday? Last Wednesday, we were in this massive downtrend, right? And then the SPY pulled up through the trend, pulled back and then broke out. And then what happened after that? It went to the next trend. It pulled up, broke down, broke out, got shit on on this trend. Now it pulls down, pulls up, tries to break the trend, gets shit on, right? Straight down, and then it gets entered into this trend again. Now that it's back in this trend and it tried to break out, breaks out, probably going to pull back, and it'll go up through this trend again. So what do I want to see on the SPY? I want to see the SPY go to 419 or something like that and just get demolished straight back down to 410. If we get that, NVIDIA will be an awesome fucking hold all day. Short NVIDIA at 200, hold it all day if the SPY can not break out of this trend line. If the SPY breaks up through this 418-ish trend line, then it could go right back up to this uh prior supply zone which would not be good for nvidia because nvidia will fucking run like crazy because anytime the market has a good green day nvidia is usually the biggest runner on the day so you don't want to be short in the day where nvidia is trying to have some crazy green moves because the banks you know they do want to sell everything right now but they definitely are buying too so you just want to stay very careful so as long as the spy holds below that that top trend line and NVIDIA can get to 200 today, I will short it, and hopefully I'll hold at least 10 shares the whole way down to 181, right back down to the bottom. And yeah, that'd be the plan. Hopefully I can use like maybe 30, 40, 50 shares. It'd be awesome to get to like 40. I think that'd be fucking so cool. Watching a, a dollar share drop make $40, that'd be so awesome. So that's the plan, that's the goal. You guys should definitely be looking for these supply and demand zones because they are game changing for sure can't beat the banks but we can join them so